In this video, we are going to do an example where we use the change of basis matrix on polynomials. So the example says, let's let V be the vector space P2. So this is all polynomials of degree at most two. B is this basis that consists of these three polynomials within P2. And C is the standard basis for P2 that has one T and T squared in it. Okay, so for this problem, we're going to just accept it as fact that this set B is in fact a basis. So the problem says, let's find the change of basis matrix from B to C and the change of basis matrix from C to B. So in the other direction. So over the, our last couple of videos, we've seen three methods for finding that change of coordinates matrix. In all of them, in all the examples that we've done using them, we have been working with column vectors, vectors in Rn. We haven't been working with things like polynomials. So it would be great if there's a way for me to not be working with polynomials, but be working with column vectors instead. And I can if I convert these to some coordinate vectors. So let's convert, let's convert the given polynomials to coordinate vectors coordinate vectors and if I'm going to do that I have to specify what basis so using let's do it using the standard basis using the standard basis the standard basis for p2 which has 1 t and t squared in it so coincidentally that's one of the bases here but you know even if c was a different basis I think it's still helpful to just write the coordinate vectors in terms of the standard basis. Those are the easiest ones to obtain. So, you know, recall when I'm trying to get a coordinate vector, let's show how I would do this for one of these polynomials, but we've seen this before back in section 4.4. You know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to write this as a linear combination of these basis polynomials, something times one plus something times T plus something times T squared. So to get that to equal 1 minus 3t squared, those coefficients have to be, I have to have a 1 here, 0 here, and then negative 3 over there. And the coordinate vector takes these coefficients, these weights, and we put those as entries in the vector. So when we do that, we can take this basis b, and it will get converted to, so the first polynomial gets converted to a vector where the entries are 1, 0, and negative 3. So again, these weights, they become the entries of the vector. So one of the things that we notice about this is, well, these are actually just the coefficients of this polynomial. That, that is precisely what happens when we are using the standard basis. Okay, so if I do the same thing with the next polynomial, well, the constant term is 0, the next coefficient is 2, and the coefficient of t squared is negative 5. And then for the last polynomial in there, I'll get 1, 2, and then 0. So that's converting this basis b to coordinate vectors. Let's do the same thing to this basis c. Let's convert these two coordinate vectors. Okay, then the first term, the, the 1 becomes a 1, 0, 0. Because there's no t term, there's no t squared term, but there's, there is a, a 1. Okay, for the t, I would get 0, 1, 0. Those are the coefficients. And for t squared, I get 0, 0, 1. Those are the coefficients. All right, so now that I have column vectors, I can more easily use one of these three methods to get these change of basis matrices. So first, maybe I'll do the change of basis matrix from B to C. Remember, this is my notation from it. The one that I'm starting with, I write on the right. And then I put an arrow to the one I'm converting to, and then I put that one on the left. So let's practice using this row reduction algorithm that we saw in the last video. So that row reduction algorithm says, well, the basis vectors of C, the, the thing on the left here, put those on the left of an augmented bar. So those are the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then b is written on the right here in this notation, so put the basis vectors of b on the right of the augmented bar. So I'll put 1, 0, negative 3, 0, 2, negative 5, 
one, two, zero on the right. Okay, and the algorithm says, well, row reduce this, row reduce this until the left-hand side, the left-hand side becomes the identity. For this problem, we get really lucky because the left-hand side is already the identity, which means there's no more row operations to be done. The thing on the right is already the change of basis matrix. So that is super, super nice. So this is already, this is already the identity, which means that this thing over here, this thing over here, this is the change of basis matrix from B to C. So we just got, that's a bit of a coincidence, bit of a coincidence because this basis we were starting off with was the standard basis. Okay, all right, so let's do the more interesting one. Let's do the harder one. What if I had to do it the other way around? So convert from the C basis vectors to the B basis vectors. So now using this notation, I put the B basis vectors on the left of the augmented bar. So one, zero, negative three, zero, two, negative five, one, two, zero. And I augment it with, now I put the C basis vectors on the right, which are one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. And now from here, I got to row reduce it. So I want to give you an opportunity to try that. So pause the video at this point for about four minutes to try that. See if you can reduce this and get that change of coordinates matrix. So pause it in four, three, two, one, pause it and try it. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it to try it. Now, I'm not going to go through all of those row operations um, just because at this point, we've seen row operations a bunch. Um, Instead, I'm just going to tell you, well, what will we end up getting? Like, we've calculated inverses a bunch. So that's why I'm not going to go through that process again. But so to get, you know, when I wrote this, it'll turn out the left-hand side becomes the identity. So I'll become, I'll get the identity. And the right-hand side will become something. The right-hand side will become something. And the something that it becomes is the change of coordinates matrix from C to B. Um, and I'll just tell you what you end up getting. It turns out that that change of coordinates matrix from C to B ends up being, we'll get five over eight and then negative five over 16, negative one over eight up top. So those are the entries in the top row. And the next row, I'll get negative three over eight, three over 16, and then negative one over eight. And the last row, I'll get three over eight, five over 16, and then one over eight. And there we have it. That's my change of coordinates matrix. That is my change of coordinates matrix.